talking about the Piers Morgan Uncensored, when Dustin Hoffman stayed up for three days straight to appear tired for his role in Marathon Man, the great Laurence Olivier famously retorted, my dear boy, have you tried acting? I mean, that is the job of an actor, right? But some think that gay roles, for example, should only be played by gay actors and disabled roles by disabled actors, trans roles by trans actors, and presumably, by that logic, Nazi roles by Nazi actors. Or is that ridiculous? Is all of it ridiculous? It's a peculiar kind of method acting zealotry, and it's happening more and more often. It would consider, for example, this sort of scene offensive. You know what a woman said to me in the casino today? She asked me if I was Liberace's son. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, come here. No, no, no. Come here. No. No, no, girl, you don't get anything. You get nothing like it. That was Matt Damon and Michael Douglas, uh, both obviously in Liberace, both acting. Now, my next guest is a gay man who says his career suffered because Hollywood, that great liberal bastion of tolerance and fairness, couldn't grasp or tolerate or be fair about his ability to play it straight. He is, of course, director, producer. Movie superstar Rupert Everett, lovely Thank to you. see you. Lovely to see um, you. When you watch, as a gay man, you watch that scene from, from Candelabra, the Liberace film. To me, as a straight guy, it seemed very sensitively done, very realistic. You? Yeah, and more than that, for me, watching that film, I was very moved by uh, the amount of work and detail mm. that those two actors bothered uh, to put into their research, the way they attacked the roles. Um, I, was, I, was, I was elated by it. Um, and there's, there's many uh, examples of, of fantastic uh, straight actors playing great gay roles, and then, then there's some less good. And um, I think the question is more, why can't gay actors play straight roles? Right. That's the thing that... Because what happened me. to you was fascinating, because when you were deemed to be straight, you got all these romantic leads in Hollywood and everyone loved you, and you were the Hugh Grant of your... If you don't mind the comparison, I would find that pretty repellent. But anyway, no, I've said it. It's out there. Uh, you were the Hugh Grant of your day. And then you came out and suddenly it was like, what, no more work for you, son. We can't have you as a straight romantic lead. I don't think it was actually quite like that, to be honest. But um, the thing that was very frustrating when, when I had my kind of big Hollywood moment, which was <clears throat> playing a, a gay best friend mm -hmm. and being gay... Uh, I, it was at that point very difficult to graduate. I knew I had to try and graduate to playing something else apart from just that role. Mm. Uh, and, in, and it felt that it was more or less impossible. So my question is, I don't think uh, gay actors should just play the gay roles. I think but the gay actors should be able to play the straight roles too. I think some straight guys play great gay roles. And it's, and not, it's not just <laughs> about the gay roles and gay actors and so on. I, I want to show some pictures here from other movies. Tom Hanks, for example in Philadelphia, actually is an example of that, but Tom Hanks in Philadelphia, to me, it was an incredibly powerful movie which shone an unbelievably bright light on mm -hmm. the issue of AIDS. And what Tom Hanks did, I thought, he played the role magnificently, but more importantly, he brought tremendous numbers of eyeballs to watch it because he's Tom Hanks. And it was a riskier period to do that as right. well. I mean, when Michael Douglas and Matt Damon did the Candelabra movie, things had changed substantially. Yes. When uh, he did that fat film, uh, it wasn't really a subject that people but talked would a, about. But would a gay man <clears throat> have played that any more powerfully? And was there a, a gay actor out at the time, for example, who would have got the box office success that Tom Hanks brought? Well, and therefore, is... the light that was shone on the issue? This is the other question. You know, people forget that Hollywood is a business. Uh, so, for example, when Scarlett Johansson uh, was uh, stopped from playing uh, a trans role... Yeah. Uh, there wasn't, there simply wasn't a trans actress at that point big enough to sustain a 50, 60 million right. dollar movie. I found that was a mistake of the trans community because there were probably lots of other trans roles in the film that would have been played by uh, trans actresses and uh, Scarlett Johansson wasn't going to be doing some portrait that was mm. anti-trans. So I felt it was slightly blinkered attitude. Eddie Redmayne <coughs> had a similar thing with the Danish girl. You know, he got into trouble for that from the trans community. But he the also... question there is, uh, he started the role as a boy, so, right. so who's going to play the boy part? Right. Um, the problem with that movie, in the end, is it was just dull. Right, which is an is another a crime <laughs> altogether. But Eddie Redmayne also played Stephen Hawking, for example, and that was an amazingly powerful... Fantastic uh, ..role. And again, shone a huge light on that particular affliction which Stephen Hawking had. And I felt did it brilliantly. Now, 
I don't know why it would need to be somebody who's got that condition that Stephen Hawking had, motor neuron disease or a variant of it, to be as effective or more effective than Eddie Redmayne could be. Well, I don't think it could have been because someone with that condition just wouldn't be able to uh, do, you know, mm. to be out there on the set from six in the morning till eight at night. I just played a role of someone who'd had a very bad stroke. Mm. Uh, it, it would be impossible for someone who'd had a very bad stroke to really right. start working. And that's the problem, isn't it? The once, you, once you take the logic... If they wanted to. Right, but if you take the logic to its <clears throat> logical end... Well, you have to be a murderer to play a murderer. Well, this is my point. So here we've got Anthony Hopkins, as, who played Hitler. Right? I mean, are we legitimately saying that if you're going to play well, Hitler now in a movie, you have to be a Nazi? Similarly, The Sopranos. The Sopranos... You know, are we going to say now that they all had to be the senior Sopranos, genuine members of the mob? Right, but on the other on the other side, Piers, you've got to remember. Yes, of course, there shouldn't be. We shouldn't be making rules about this. Yes, of course, it's great uh, for gay actors who've had quite a hard time, you know, historically mm. uh, to be playing more roles, to be getting the gay. It's quite frustrating. Uh, I was frustrated. I remember going to see Colin Firth in um, the film by Tom Ford, and he invited oh, yeah, yeah. me to a screening. I, th I thought, well. Thanks, Colin. That's the end of my career. <laughs> because, you know, that role really should have been mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, um, and uh, so, you know, there's a frustration about that, of course. Uh, I and, and there's also a point I do get, which is what um, some disabled uh, actors have made the point to me, that there's not the opportunity at the grassroots level, you know, for them to get on the right ladder to get them into a position where they may get these big roles because they're not perceived to be big enough box office stars. They find that the system is a bit oppressive to people. Uh, and I get that. I get the fact that maybe disabled actors do not get the same opportunities. I get that too. But, I mean, the thing is, what, how is the business meant to change for that? I mean, it's, mm. it's, it's quite complicated. No, I, you know, it's really frustrating uh, if you're a disabled actor. Mm. And uh, it's... Um, I, but I don't think... The answer to Richard III mm. in Stratford-on-Avon, for example, which Greg, um, the outgoing head of mm. the RSC, said that it can only now be played by a disabled which actor. I, was, I just thought it was ridiculous to say that. I think it would be loved... I'd love to see it played by a disabled mm. actor, by the way, but I don't see why uh, it's part, one of the great roles that mm. actors want to play. You know, acting is acting. Movies and television and cinema are a particular and isn't that, arm... isn't that the thing, that ultimately... Acting should mean what it says on the tin. It's acting. That you as an actor, one of the best in the business, you should be able to play any role, actually, right? Because I, mean, I look at things like the period drama Bridgerton, for example. When you look at Bridgerton now, it's actually a fantasy in a way, in the sense that it has many black actors playing people that we know at the time were almost uniquely white feudal people, mm -hmm. right? Lords and so on. I don't mind that at all. Mm. In the same way, I wouldn't mind if Idris Elba was the next James Bond. I would mind if they suddenly made James Bond a woman. In other words, there's going to be a kind of common sense valve here. Hasn't you wouldn't it? mind, or you would mind. I would you? mind if it was a woman. Oh, it's like oh. women should get their own spies, right? So you right. can't turn James Bond, and I don't <laughs> want him going non-binary or any other things. Right? Right. None of that. None of that. Um, but I don't mind if it's a black a black actor playing Bond at all. That would I, I would think that's fine. Same way Bridgerton. Seems and fine. same way Doctor Who is now a black gay actor. Right. And I think that's very exciting. Yeah. I think that will give uh, Doctor Who a, a whole new impetus. Which but that's is a different. But that's a different thing. I I don't think anyone really, if you, as long as you're not a bigot, would have a problem with any of that. Let, let me just um, while I've got you, I'm curious about your view. We've been talking a lot on the show about cancel culture, this sort of rather insidious phenomenon, which is raised its ugly head. You've always been very outspoken. You've always been pretty uncensored in all the time I've known you. What do you feel about the society that we now operate in, these eggshells everyone feels they have to tread on? I think it feels like uh, the Stasi, to be honest. Mm. Uh, I think it feels incredibly repressive. I don't think it gets... It manages to achieve the aims that, uh, that, it's, that it's after. For example, I don't know... Uh, I, I've never met J.K. Rowling, for example, um, and I've never read her books. And um, I have, but I, I'm willing to bet that before this all happened, she was not someone who was anti-transsexual. No, uh, not remotely. She's Everything you know about it, nothing. So, but now she might be. <laughs> she might easily be now. Well, funny enough, so, I interviewed. I interviewed. It was a big scene outside the Emmeline Pankhurst statue in Manchester, 
where you had women's rights uh, campaigners were going to have a little rally there. And you had these trans activists turn up. And I interviewed one of the trans activists who just was incredibly abusive on the show live, calling me all sorts of names and stuff. And I don't have a transphobic bone in my body. I want trans people to have equality and fairness, but I also want to safeguard women's rights. I don't think the two are incompatible. No, but I think at a certain point now, it's reached a, a, a point where someone's got to start trying to make peace uh, yeah. among these, between these two groups. And I think the thing we tend to forget is that in the kind of 24-hour history of humanity, these two million years, the women's movement only started literally three seconds yes. ago in that whole thing. Yes. So our brains are hardwired to something very anti-women too, in a yeah. way. So the trans movement has come right on the edge mm. of the women's movement. In fact, they're probably, when you look at it from further in advance, the same thing. We do, you're right, though. We need, we need to bring the extremities of these debates. Because to a I more don't believe people position. are trans. These people, I, I, no, I think I agree. It's, it's dangerous to call people uh, TERFs yeah. when they're not, because yeah, you make them into it. J.K. Rowling, to me, is not transphobic. She wants to safeguard women's rights, and she should be applauded for doing so. Rupert, we've run out of time. Great to talk to you. Thank you You're very much, Piers. tremendous shave, I might add. So are you. Really good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming <laughs> Thank in. you very much. <laughs> good to see you. I want to play Rupert Everett in a movie. Uh, actually, I want you to play me in a movie. I mean, mm. That would be good, actually. I could. You'd be good as me if you just, you know... I don't Lost know. some weight. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see you. Take care. Oh, he's off. He's storming off. Oh, am I meant to? No, not yet. It's fine. I'm I don't know. If you want to... It's, it's the done thing. You can sit there for a bit if you like. It wasn't exactly the... <laughs>